Hey, welcome to Creative for the Impossible. Chrissy Nelson here. I am meeting with my friend today, Pastor Jennifer Evaz. She's written a brand new book, Glory Carriers, hosting God's presence every day. You are made to host the presence of God, to carry His glory, to bring it through your streets, through your communities, into your home, your workplace, your families. You're not gonna wanna miss this time with Jennifer as she shares about how you are a glory carrier. beautiful book, Glory Carriers. And I know, and I mean, I think just hearing your heart behind it, yeah. your heart is the beautiful thing that then launched into and poured out into this book. Just your heart behind it, what you hope people will gain from right. this as they read it. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Well, it, you know, this book is really, it's, it's a journey. Uh, it's my journey. And what I'm hoping to, to convey is that, uh, you know, this journey with the Holy Spirit, and that's really what this book is about, is learning how to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit that you actually can have one. We're taught relationship with, the, with our Father, our, you know, God the Father, we're taught relationship with God the Son, with Jesus, um, and that's all good, mm -hmm. great. But for some reason, the Holy Spirit seems to be neglected. He's, he's you know, set to the side. Um, Maybe we've encountered his power. Maybe we've we've seen the miraculous. But actually, a relationship with him is the gap I want to fill. And I was provoked into that relationship, really out of frustration. And I just was noticing in my own personal ministry there were a lot of gaps. I wanted to see people free. Um, I was not seeing the power of God the way I saw it on others, the way I saw it in the Bible. And I took note of people who are walking in the power of God consistently. And they all said one thing. They said, the Holy Spirit's my friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can have a friendship with the Holy Spirit? Okay, how does that work? And I had to work through fears. Um, you know, cause I mean, he, he was scary to me. I, you know, you read in the Bible, like, like you can blaspheme Jesus, but don't you dare blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Right. That's an eternal sin. And I took note of that. I'm like, oh, that's scary. Not, I don't know why I even would blaspheme him, but you know, you just kind of right. like, well, something about him is a little scarier. That's how I interpreted it. It was immature, but that's how I interpret it. And then the whole Ananias and Sapphira scene. Okay. That just right. killed me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they lied in church. But Peter's like, no, you lied to the Holy Spirit and you're out of here. Like they died. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I know a lot of people lie in church. They didn't die. The odds are probably for me. But again, why would I lie? You, right, you know what I'm right. saying? But it's just made him scary to me. And so I had to really work through that. But I, I so desired the, the ministry through my life being effective. I desired that. And then I had enough encounter with the Spirit of God that I was caught. I was captured and I wanted more of that. So I decided to really press through the fears and just go for it. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of like if I die, I die. I, it's really, yeah. it's kind of an immature, young response, not recognizing that that, that that was just, you know, immaturity. But pressing through that and then just literally discovering how much the Holy Spirit desires us, desires you, wants that relationship with you. He wants to reveal himself to you. Like he'll hug you. I mean, he'll kiss you. I mean, like he'll, he's there. And, and out of that relationship, which I found was, that was a difficult piece though. Cause you know, you're constantly having to transform. Um, there's no superficiality with him. You can't fake it with him. Um, you know, and he goes right to your heart, like what's in there. And he's constantly working on your heart. And that was the difficult part because you have to, you have to really, really change. Yeah. You know, you can't fake it. 
Um, but that's where I saw the anointing come. That's where I saw the glory come. And that's where I saw the miracles come. The stuff that gets people really, really free. And I desired that, not only in my own life, but I desired it with others. I'm so tired of Christians being stuck in bondage and, you know, Jesus paid for it all, but, but there's this huge gap. And I'm like, I want to be a facilitator of freedom. And, and it was all boiled down to that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it's hard and it's in, it's work. Um, and it's a constant in my life, but I, the, the outcome with him and the outcome of ministry, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. You talk about like that moment where you encountered the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know, in this book yeah. and it's so beautiful. Yeah. I, I just began to ask the question, you know, in prayer, okay, how do I be your friend? Yeah. You know, cause I, I, I kept hearing that, you know, you can, you can have a friendship with the Holy Spirit and I admired the ministry of these persons that were saying the same thing. And I, you know, I, I was like, okay, how do I be your friend? Cause I had no clue. And there's almost like, you know, you can kind of guess at a few things when you read the word, but, but face to face is a completely different ball game. It's yeah. like, like the Holy Spirit has a will and emotions and, and, you know, he's not predictable. <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, and, and he, he doesn't, he doesn't honor your playbook. You know, it, it's really like he, you have to really learn how to walk with him mm -hmm. in, in the fullness of who he is and learn his whims and his desires and what he likes and what he doesn't like. And you're finding out there's this whole person and personality. And I feel like, yes, I've, I've really crossed some bridges in regards to that relationship, but it's constantly unfolding. I feel like it just scratched the surface yeah. and it's gonna take an eternity to really to really understand who he is. Yeah. What was the moment like when he, you say he wrapped his arms around you? Yeah, I've had that more than once. Uh. And it's just the, I call it the embrace of the Spirit of God. Um, to me, it feels like a, a hug. Yeah. I, I call it like a, like a hug. It's like an embrace and you feel his presence all around you. I, I think that's the same thing that we read about in the Bible about Peter when it says his shadow mm. would heal people as he walked down the street. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. And what I have learned is when I see miracles uh, in the ministry of people, I can tell who they've been with yes. by the miracles. You know, not to create striving or competition because everybody's, you know, at a different place in that journey. But at the same time, I can see where it's matured. And I can see where, where, when their shadow heals people, yeah. okay, they've been with the spirit of God. Yeah. They've taken the time, you know, and, and it's a real thing. Yeah. And so I, I want that about my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I love how you talk about observing these glory carriers, you know, people who are carrying his glory. And then there was a moment too in there where you realized, oh, Wait, is that, could that be me too? <laughs> yeah, and that's the point of the book because I'm just an ordinary person who just fell in love with Jesus. You know, I, I had no intention of being a Christian. I thought Christians were weird, um, you know, and I, I just I didn't want anything to do with, do with it except for my life was falling apart. And I got invited to one of those crazy, you know, Pentecostal churches that I actually never set foot in again. You know, it was that crazy. But at the same time, Jesus met me there. And I truly, truly fell in love with Jesus. Um, and, and so uh, just coming from, you know, all the stuff, all that background, all that history, being an ordinary person and discovering that the Holy Spirit, um, he's, not, he's, he's no respecter person. Yeah. He, he, he desires everybody's heart. Yeah. And if you'll present your heart to him, he's there. It doesn't matter. You, you can be, you can be rich, you can be poor, you can be young, you can be old, you can be at any stage in life. Yeah. You can be, you know, the most smartest businessman, the most intellectual person. You can be the most lowest IQ person. Yeah. And you want him, he's there. Yes. I know. And that's the only real prerequisite really yeah. is that our hunger. Desire. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had an encounter like that when I was 15. Mm. I was at the end of my rope. I felt mm. like the woman at, at, um, with the issue of blood where it was like, my heart was the hand that reached to his garment, yeah. but met him. It was my hunger. You know, I right. needed God. I needed him to be real. Right. And he met me in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a day before 
he wasn't meeting me like that. Right. But what was different about this day? Right. This day I was desperate and hungry for him. And same thing, he wrapped his arms around me yeah. and he held me all night long. Wow. You know, <laughs> held me all night long and yeah. told me who I was, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what God desires for people, like you're saying. Yeah. You know? And I, I don't, I, you know, I hate to say that, that, you know, we can only find him in desperation, but it seems that when we are desperate, something in, in us reaches further yeah. and and he will meet us there but i want to say that you don't have to get to rock bottom yeah. to actually have this encounter that that you can stir up hunger and that's what i'm wow. i'm believing this book is going to do yeah. and that these you know these tv shows such as what we're doing right now are going to accomplish that in in somebody's heart is to stir up that hunger before they hit rock bottom and life is is you know going to pot, just stir up that hunger now, yeah. reaching out for him now, and and seeing what will in, unfold in our lives. And and you know as we were talking beforehand, Moses when he walked by the bush, just an ordinary day, yeah. doing what he normally does, walked by a bush and he just took a look and he got hungry, yeah. at, to know why is this bush on fire? And his whole life changed right there. And that's the experience, the encounter I want people to have today on the show, in the book, getting them to look and, and get hungry and to reach. Yeah. You define kind of a glory carrier in here. What, what um, I'm going to read what you say. Okay. I love the way you put it. Um, if we define the glory of God as the manifest presence of God, then a glory carrier is one who displays the glory of God in a visible way that is both miraculous and reflects God's character. The demonstration of glory can never be produced through some kind of religious methodology or spiritual formula. Rather, it flows supernaturally from our intimate friendship with the manifest presence of God, the Holy Spirit. Hi. You know, I don't know uh, about you, but I've heard some uh, revivalists, and I, re I respect them, I respect what they do, but there's almost a pressure to produce the signs and wonders. Fine, mm -hmm. great, there needs to be a demonstration. At the same time though, we can't neglect the relationship right. with the Spirit of God because it's putting the cart before the horse. So yeah, you might pursue signs and wonders and, and the miracle type of ministry, but if you don't have that relationship in place, you're gonna burn out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're gonna run out of steam, you know, you might see some things happen, but it's not going to last. Yeah. Where it lasts is when you are walking day to day with the Spirit of God. Then the signs and wonders are natural. Yeah. It's a natural outflow, and they also grow in dimension and, and, and directive and, and creativity. I have found, like in this season alone, I've seen more miracles in the last year that are just nuts <laughs> and crazy and off the book. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just, I'm just following my friend. Yeah. I'm just following my friend. This is what he's doing. And, and, and it does grow. It does grow. But I'm not striving. That's right. I refuse to strive when it comes to the miracle realm. Yeah. Why? Why would we need to? Right. Why? When Jesus said, it's actually better that I go. Yeah. Because when I go, yeah. I'm going to send him. Right. Who is this him? Your comforter, your counselor, right. your advocate. I'm going to send him. Right. And, and he's the power of God. Yeah. You know, and he's the power in the presence of God. He is the demonstration of God. He intends to be visible, even though he's invisible, but he, he intends to be visible. And, you know, I'm not gonna strive for those miracles, but at the same time, I'm not gonna deny people the presence of God yeah. on my life. And so it's kind of like that, that, that balancing act, yeah. you know, and I feel like I've got it. Like, you know, I just pursue him and the rest flows out. Yeah. And, and even in those, there's been hard places where, where he's called me into obedience and to, to do certain assignments, we'll, we'll call it that, that are hard. They're, they're, they're a battle, mm -hmm. and yet I'm so captivated by him, I can't, I can't tell him no. I don't want to tell him right. no. And I know that he'll see me on the other side of it, one way or the other. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And now you, um, you pastor a church in California, mm -hmm. and you talked about that you guys have been in renewal. Yes. For uh, a decade. Even longer, let's see, since August of 1999. I could pull it back all the way there. Yeah. And we have, and it's, it, it really is when the Holy Spirit, he literally fell in, our, in the church service. My husband was preaching and he had been at a conference where he, had, we, he and I had both received a real power injection from the Spirit of God from people who had been at Toronto and received their power injection. So do you see how that, that yeah. all happened? And, and so he just began to, to tell 
the church. He says, um, if you want the power of God, come to the front. And up until then, if we were to do that, maybe two people would come to the front. That day, they rushed the front. And it was so messy. We didn't have catchers. We didn't have little little cover cloths. You know, we didn't have anything. Yeah. And I just know it was a big mess and the Holy Spirit was just moving powerfully. And we've been in that ever since, wow. ever since. And so we, we've had to learn to pastor it, right. you know? And, and, and so the, um, uh, we've seen so many people healed, so many people delivered, salvations just coming out our ears. Um, marriages restored, all the stuff. Yeah. We've seen it and we've seen uh, a whole city start to hunger mm -hmm. for the presence of God when it was a religious shutdown city uh, until that point. It's taken time, yeah. but that that's what the Holy Spirit does uh, on, on an individual mm -hmm. and on a group of people. Yeah. So. Praise God. And I think I just can picture just like even as you're talking, I'm picturing hands that I've seen of yeah. people ha who have even read your book and like the, the, the glory of God on their the hands, gold the, the gold oil and the oil. Coming out. Yeah. yeah. But that's what you wanted, right? Wanted. When you wrote the this. Book, the book has to be an encounter. I, you know, and that's how I write. That is my writing style that you will actually encounter mm -hmm. what you read. It, it has to be miraculous. Yeah. I believe the Lord, he proves himself with signs and wonders. He, he proves the message with signs and wonders. And that's, that's what the word says. And it's really a testimony that this is, this is real, um, that this is going to take you somewhere and you're going to, you're going to cross over from the natural to the supernatural, um, as a result of just, in, uh, reading the journey of this book. I put my frustrations in there. Yeah. I put my, you know, the times where I just like, like, I'm just not doing this well. Yeah. You know, I want people to know the reality that, yeah. that I did not walk a smooth path <laughs> in all of this. I don't think anybody does. No. At the same time, he met me, um, powerfully and those kind of demonstrations and demonstrations of people who have read that book who are less than perfect, who just are hungry. You know, and, and, and I think that's, that's more reality than anything else. Hey, I just want to take a minute and thank all of my amazing ministry partners. Your prayer, your support, it's because of you that this is possible. I can't even go through another day of filming without stopping and honoring you. Thank you for hearing from the Lord and partnering with me and Creative for the Impossible. All right, Jennifer, let, let's talk about chapter five. My no favorite. guts, no glory. No <laughs> guts, no glory. It's my favorite chapter. And I, it's my favorite chapter because it was such a, a life changing story um, that, that brought that chapter forth, a, a life changing encounter that brought that chapter forth. And I was going to Australia for the first time. I was actually going to Australia and heading to Bangkok my heart was more focused on Bangkok because I'm like, surely logically, reasonably, and spiritually, there's right. much more warfare in Bangkok. I'm, that's where I really need to, you know, really focus and, you know, pray and all that. Australia, piece of cake, do a prayer conference on the beach, yeah. couple days. And, and I went in there. Um, I had the most warfare that I've had in a long time uh, connected to that area in Australia more so than Bangkok, which shocked me. And it had to do with a territorial ancient stronghold in the area, if you research it, um, and, and you know, with the indigenous people, and it, it's all rooted in their society, rooted in their culture, rooted in their, their architectural stuff. And it was, it was a python spirit. Um, and Acts chapter 16 describes it, it's a real deal. Yeah. And I got very, very ill in connection with it. Pythons that take your breath away, and I got a respiratory sickness going right in, but I knew it was all spiritual. So lots and lots of warfare. Okay. Go in there, do the prayer conference, do the stuff that prayer people do, intercessors, and we're going to take authority over this and we're going to repent for the sins of this nation. And you know, you just do that kind of thing. Yeah. We did all that. And I was very satisfied with that conference. It was just powerful. It was just real breakthrough. The very last night of the conference, um, we finished up, wrapped it up. The very last night I went to bed, very satisfied very calm, very peaceful, um, through that warfare. And then I had an encounter with God that I've never had 
since <laughs> or, or before. Um, I, I hope I have another one like that. It's like one of those encounters that completely resets your life. And he met me literally in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit, he met me in the middle of the night. He picked me up out of bed, if you can imagine that. Not like Ezekiel, you know, pulled by the hair. It was literally like that embrace, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always think of Ezekiel. He got pulled up by the hair. No, not me. Yeah, I pulled up by the God. shoulders, <laughs> you know, like, like an embrace. And he literally brought me to his chest, you know, brought me to his chest. And, and when that happened, something from him, that's the best way to describe it, something from him dropped into my heart. I felt it. Something dropped into my heart. When that happened, I was completely undone. And like, I couldn't come back. I, I've never come back from this thing. And I was completely undone. And here's the reason why, is because my heart resuscitated in that moment. And I had no idea. I didn't even know it. Of course he did. Yeah. I had no idea that half of my heart had died. I didn't know. And the reason I didn't know is when your heart dies, and the reason it dies is because of grief and pain and, yeah and life and hurt and, and your heart begins to die. Uh, you know, we, we actually shut our own hearts down because we don't want to feel the pain anymore. Right. We're trying to survive yeah. life. And I had done that unconsciously and I just didn't know. And so my heart resuscitated and all of a sudden I could feel again. And what scared me is that when your heart dies, you don't know it because you don't feel that you don't feel. Right. And that's dangerous because you can't be led by the Holy Spirit in the, in the areas of your heart that you can't sense his presence. You know, we sense him from the heart. This is why we're yeah. commanded to be wholehearted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and, but I was half-hearted, not because I was rebellious, yeah. not because I was in sin. Yeah. I was half-hearted because my heart had died. Wow. And he miraculously, mercifully resuscitated my heart. It was such a miracle that I actually began to minister out of that testimony for a solid year. I talked about that one testimony and I saw what happened to people and they would literally clutch their hearts and say, my heart's coming back, my heart's coming back. Or they would go out in the presence of God, much like I did, because they'd become undone as their heart would resuscitate and they would start to feel again when they didn't feel anymore. And there is a healing process that goes with this. You have to deal with why your heart died in the first place. And, and I have been in that process. There's no getting around that. Yeah. But, to, but you know, we want to actually to, to go there with him and present our hearts to him. Yeah. Because I have learned this, this one scripture was so crystal clear to me, Psalm 119, 32, that, that we, we, um, we want the Lord to, um, uh, uh, enlarge our hearts so that we can obey him. Yeah. And the reason we want him to enlarge our hearts so we can obey him, because if our heart is only half working, we can only half obey him. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why so many people have these big calls on their lives and they can never step into it because only half their heart works. And so we have to get all of our heart working so we can actually carry the bigness of our call. Yeah and the bigness of our destiny and actually feel the presence of the Lord and the encounters that he wants to give to us. Yeah. It's a huge revelation for me. And I believe that the Lord is doing just a, a, literally a revolution in, in the heart of his church. Yeah. Because like, like yourself, like me, pain happens, yeah. life happens. We, we choose to survive it. We shut down pain, we numb it. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have to do to get through the day, not realizing we're, we're we're literally stopping our heart from feeling the presence of the Lord. We're even shrinking our life from the purposes of God. Wow. And we have to be wholehearted. Yeah. This whole thing about being wholehearted is, is huge. We've really not understood it. Yeah. And we can't let our love go, grow cold. Yeah. We, we, we have to say, like, like you were just saying um, before we got on air here, that, that um, I have to keep my heart open even if it hurts, even yeah. if I get hurt and trust the Lord. Yeah. To, to, to keep my heart yeah. because I'd rather feel than not feel. Yeah. yeah, so what can people do, you know? What are some of the things that you lead people into, that you, how you pastor them and disciple them and mentor them into this place? Well, I do it from a lot of different angles. I can pray for people and that anointing, if they're open, that anointing will come upon them. It, it literally is an anointing to heal the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. okay? You know, yeah. Luke chapter four. Yeah. And, and, and so there's that way. The fact that I'm just talking about it, if, if it's capturing 
uh, a person, you know, they know it's them, they can just go take it to the Lord themselves and start that journey on their own. Um, read chapter five in my book or listen to, I, I have a few clips, Travail of Heart on YouTube. They can, they can listen to it and, and take the journey and, and go there. But I want to encourage people to take the journey, even if it's, it's really painful, even if it's really hard. And that's usually what stops people is the pain of the journey. But you've got to trust the Lord with your pain. Yeah. You've got to trust the Lord with your broken heart yeah. and your broken pieces. Yeah. And life is going to change, but it needs to change. And you know it because yeah. you can't obey the Lord because you're not wholehearted because yeah. you're not whole. Yeah. You know what the Holy Spirit, what the Lord said to me one day, I had just finished um, doing something, finishing uh, obedience. He had called me to do something and I had just walked that out and finished it. And I was sitting down, leaning back in a chair and the wind was breezing. I was outside. I could hear the birds chirping, you know, and just sort of resting almost like, what was that? What yeah. was it that I was even obeying? It seemed small. Yeah. And the, the Holy Spirit said to me, when you obey, it's as though you are wrapping your arms around me and yeah. giving me a hug. Right. So he hugs us into that wholeheartedness and we can hug right back, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and I, like what I love about you and your team, what I've observed in this short time is you guys are very heart oriented. Like it's all over you, mm -hmm. but so many places they're head oriented and, and they're very logical and linear and they, they measure their obedience and, but they don't, there's, there's not a connection in here and do that for 20, 30 years, you lose your fire. Mm. You crack because you, you, the fire of God comes from your heart, not from your head. Right. Uh, you, you can't just, you know, uh, um, think your way, you know, yeah. into obedience forever. We obey from the heart. Yeah. And so, so this is where I want people to drop from their head to their heart. Don't check your brain out, but drop from their head to their heart yeah. and begin to really explore the heart arena with the help of the Holy Spirit, because that's where you're going to be able to carry Him and carry His glory in dimensions you never thought possible. And then it leads to all the signs and wonders, all the, all that stuff. And, and you know, so that, that's really the process of it all. And that's the journey I've been on and I've walked it through and I, I wouldn't change it. It was the hardest thing ever, yeah. but I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Amen. Man, I loved my time with Jennifer Evez. I love her story. I love her book, Glory Carriers. The fact that you're a glory carrier, the fact that you are given that spirit of God within you, the Holy Spirit that makes you shine, that makes you radiate his presence everywhere you go and that you can carry that is so encouraging to me. I love the part in her book and I love the part in her story where she talks about how she had that encounter with the Lord and her heart was miraculously resuscitated. I've seen things she's put online in that where people are experiencing the same thing when they're reading her book. They're saying, my heart felt warm again. My heart felt alive again. That's why you need to read this book. That's one of the reasons that keeps me coming back to it is because I'm feeling that warmth in my heart. God is doing something. God is wanting you to carry his glory. He's wanting you to manifest his presence everywhere you go so that he he can reach the lost and the hurting around you and through you. Jennifer knows that she's created for the impossible and you're created for the impossible too.